The U.S. of Archie is an animated television series produced by Filmation that aired on the CBS network from 1974 to 1976. This show is the next variation of Filmation's popular animated Archie series. Only this time around, instead of the gang running their own TV station or having a musical variety show, Archie and his friends would look back at famous events in American history. No matter the time period, whether the American Revolution, California Gold Rush, or the beginnings of the Transcontinental Railroad, the gang would all have look-alike ancestors who had participated in the myriad of historical events. They would team up with the likes of Teddy Roosevelt, Ben Franklin, and Thomas Edison. Hi gang, welcome to U.S. of Archie. On the wall here are the portraits of the ancestors of all the Archie gang. We've got our ancestors here together, and that's just the way they were in the old days, too. Archie Andrews, Reggie Mantle, Betty Cooper, Veronica Lodge, Moose Mason, Jughead, and the newest member of the group, Chuck Clayton, were all along for the trip down memory lane for these iconic moments in U.S. history. Chuck Clayton is the very first African-American male character to join the Archie gang. Chuck would first appear simultaneously in the August issues of Life with Archie number 112 and Jughead number 195 in the year 1971. Along with his athletic pursuits, Chuck would go on to have the self-referential dream of becoming a professional comic book artist. This animated series would also mark his first appearance on an animated television series as well. Listen, death is stalking us according to where we were sitting on the bus. Superfluous black character! My name is Chuck. First appearing alongside his son within the pages of Archie at Riverdale High, issue number 14, in March of 1974, is Chuck's father, known to the rest of the gang as Coach Clayton. Normally in the comics, Floyd Clayton is a gym instructor alongside Coach Cleats. However, on this animated series, his occupation is that of a test pilot for supersonic jets. More than likely, this change was made to tie in the episode bookends to that episode's historical subjects, the Wright Brothers. An exact model of the plane my dad is going to test pilot. Another subject of interest was Susan B. Anthony and the women's suffrage movement in the early 1900s. Here in the episode Day of the Ladies, Betty and Veronica would have more prominent roles. Although Reggie was generally made out to be the most resistant to social change on the show, with a little motivation from two pretty females, he was painting the protest signs for women's rights to vote soon enough. Us uh, He-Man, we, we never catch cold. <gasps> oh, it's such a pity we don't have a, a He-Man like you to lead the way. <laughs> The girls' first comic title of their very own, titled Archie's Girls, Betty and Veronica, would first premiere in the year 1950 and lasted for 347 issues before being relaunched as Betty and Veronica in 1987. Veronica would get her own solo title in 1989, and Betty would join her four years later in 1992. Yeah, yeah! Hey, they got you all wrapped up, Reggie! Reggie, Reggie joined the ladies! Reggie joined the ladies! I tend to see the previous series episode, Generation Flap, from the Sabrina half of the Archie Comedy Hour as the inspiration for this very series. In this episode, Della the Head Witch's nasty nephew, Dexter, conjures up historical figures like George Washington, Ben Franklin, and Betsy Ross in Sabrina and the Archie Gang's history class. The gang would actually hang out with Thomas Edison as he discovers the light bulb, while Mr. Weatherby is occupied with Ben Franklin in this precursor to the U.S. of Archie. Hey gang, Mr. Edison has just about got his light bulb working. Impossible! Mr. Franklin and I haven't discovered electricity yet. <gasps> what am I saying? <laughs> The U.S. of Archie also had been purposely designed to tie in to the then upcoming American Bicentennial. One of the best episodes features not only a tie-in to the Bicentennial, but the origins of America's national anthem, The Star-Spangled Banner, by Francis Scott Key. Oh, say can you see, by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars, through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched, were so gallantly streaming.
have to understand that I truly love and appreciate my country, so seeing an episode focusing on the Star Spangled Banner like this is really great. I'm the type of guy who is chanting, USA! USA! alongside my buddies and rooting for McDougal when watching Spriggan up at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm the dude whose favorite episode of G Gundam is this one. Ready? Go! Oh, it's the song. For spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, sure. God shed his friends on thee. <laughs> I see it now. You've been there for me, kind of like my mother. But I won't let you treat me like a little boy! Yeah! Ha! My punch is a lot stronger than that! I have to say, I much prefer the bookends to the Star Spangled Banner, where the kids were working on a historical school project, as opposed to the ham-fisted way some episodes tried especially hard to connect current day events such as race relations to the Underground Railroad, or somehow tying in present day views on noise pollution to Alexander Graham Bell's creation of the telephone in the past. I heard you, Mr. Bell. You asked me to come. What is it? You, you heard me? Over the telephone? Yes! It works! Yeah! How <laughs> oh, it works! Wonderful! However, the odd man out from Filmation's traditionally socially conscious agenda is the episode There She Blows. This particular episode features Herman Melville in what is referred to as the Golden Age of Whaling. They like you very much, but they are not the hell your whales. I, I suppose they've told you that, huh? The hell they did. Even though there is a brief tag in the epilogue about modern whales being an endangered species, there does seem to be a bit more romance to the good old days of whaling than I would have expected from a Filmation cartoon. Moose! All I want from you is silence! Seems to me as if Lou Scheimer and crew were really proud of this series. And as for me, I take away a Schoolhouse Rock sort of vibe from the whole thing, but with Archie and the gang. Overall, save the gang from Riverdale, this show is historically accurate, if anything else, and frankly, I'm kind of surprised no one ever tried to use it as a learning tool in any of my history classes when going to elementary school. <laughs>
impossible. Mr. Franklin and I haven't discovered electricity yet. What am I saying? <laughs>